Now, I'm going to show you a technique to follow in preparing your fabric to tie and dye by showing you how to make your patterns on the fabric, directly on the fabric, as well as tying it when necessary. In tie and dye, that is tying your fabric as a resist method, you need a raffia, you can use a wool, like the baby wool, and you can use a twine, like what I'm holding in my hands. And in one of the methods, like I told you initially in the introduction, we use bottle cap. Also, we are going to use needle, sewing needle. These ones are already threaded on the wool. The first pattern I'm going to show you is when you want circular design. Maybe you like in t-shirts and so on, or bubu uh, kaftan. So what you do on your fabric, you look for the midpoint of the fabric, you pick it, and you pick the fabric. So hold it bunch up like that, and what you can do now is to tie certain parts of it, you know, in circular motion. So with me here is Miss Rose Agar, one of my assistants. So my assistant is helping me to hold. I will now split and cover that area. So in areas where I really want resist or that is not open to penetrate, I can still twist, add some, uh, twist it and continue to plate it. For those of us in this part of the world, it's just like you are plating your hair, which is a method we in the African region using beautifying self by plating our hair using black threads. <laughs> so here you can see the finished work. We've been able to tie this area, tie this area. So the area that you can still see the fabric will be the area that will absorb the dye. And you will see at the end of the process, the finished design. The next kind of dye technique we want to show you is using bottle cap as a way to create design in your fabric. So using some, and my assistant is taking some to be to, to take in this exercise. So what you do, you the, the bottle cap, you take it through the bottom of a piece and then twist it to have a firm. Twist as wide as the design you want, the design, depending on the design you want. So using your thread, your yarn, this part we call it thread, <laughs> the yarn, you tie around where you take twisted. Make sure it's firm and it's tight. It's fun, you know. So this is something you can do with your, your children, your siblings, a play group, just well away time in the process you are creating something beautiful. So when you are done with one, you continue like that to the next. So you go to another portion. So it depends on how scattered you want the circles to you are created to form. Do that. And you twist again. So look at what the finished work with all the caps. So this whole area, space area, the pins that don't have the cap, we absorb the color. But the most important part is that the area that was tied, we the, the dye will not penetrate. Those little of it may bleed into it, but it may not penetrate, and that creates the design. So next, we are going to show you. Another technique in tie and dye, and it's called marbling technique. It gives a marbling effect. Is this technique is so interesting? So all you do is the fabric you want to make, you just bunch it up, full bunch like that, and just squeeze it. So after squeezing, you squeeze tightly, and you take your, you take the the yarn, and start to tie. 
Okay, so can you be off now? So it's that time. Make sure it's tight. So you can see the finished tie. You can see it's like a ball. And by the time we dye, a lot of a lot of these areas will not absorb the dye. And the good thing about this, you can dye it up to three times. That is, when this after dyeing falls, you can allow it to dry and you open and remarble again, that is squeeze, bunch up again, tie again, dye. Like it comes out so pretty. I'm sure you saw it at the introduction uh, part of the DVD. I want to show you now how to pull your fabric in preparing to hand sew the fabric for tie and dye. What you do is you roll, make straight lines. I'm using a two inch wide ruler so it makes it easier and quicker. So each of this road line I'm still going to divide them into like three portions or four portions. Depending on the number of lines I want to create, line effects I want to create. So I can skip some space in between. So I've decided to leave that space and continue with this space as my design. So this, what I'm doing actually is stitch lines. So after trying my lines, I'll now use my tre already threaded needle with wool. I've threaded with wool. And the stitching you are making is basting, basting stitch or uh, just temporary stitch. You make a knot and you start basting. You can do this by hand. Or you can also do it with using sewing machine. But when you are using sewing machine, make sure you are using maybe stitch length 4. That is loose as if you want to make gathers, make it easier. But here in Nigeria, most times, you know, it's a kosher crap. So here, you can see. The, the area that was not the drawing part, you know, spacing between, but the one that's already stitched. And you can see, so by the time after stitching, you now pull it to create a gather effect. So if the pulling, I will create areas that will give the resist technique. So you see, this is the beginning part, rolling it stitching it and the pulled one. Still on the stitching technique, you can create zigzag pattern. So for the zigzag pattern, you can see I'm using an L square here. So it gives me a V shape automatically. So I'm just, I guess I'm going to be using four and a half from this end and end at four and a half here. And, and from here, I'll make it like the same four and a half and here, at the bottom, it should be five and a half. So up is four and a half, bottom five and a half. I move it to another point and I repeat what I just did. So I'm going to, to have three stitch line. I will now roll in the middle. I can do that freestyle to save time. Just do that freestyle. And the good thing about using Taylor's chalk is that you can wash it off when you are dying. That is after dying, washing off the dye. You won't see a trace of all these markings. Now it's time to stitch. We stitch also with basting stitch, just like we did when it's a straight, straight pattern. So little stick, uh, talks like this. Yeah, you see, you already is stitched part and the marked parts. So you also do the same thing, you pull your thread. This time I would advise you pull each thread one by one because it may be difficult to do all at the same time. It comes together. So this L area will be, it will absorb dye but there will still be some traces of white from the main fabric. 
and I want to advise it doesn't have to be white fabric or every time you can also use fabric with other colors but let it always be lighter shade than the uh, intended dye you want to use have fun now I want to mix the mixture of tie and dye so you need caustic soda is one to two ratio but I'm using two because I'm, I'm dying up to about three yards of fabric, cutting fabric. Then sulfite will be four. This is one tablespoon. That's three. That's four. So add to the dye one and a half tablespoon. So this one tablespoon. Mix here. Mix it up. And then add Add half cup hot water. Mix. You can see it's dark. The color is actually green, but it will oxidize and show its true color. And here I have, have a gallon of a gallon of hot water, which is equivalent to 16 cups of water. And so these are the ones that I tied with raffia. I'll drop them in, making sure every part of them is immersed in the dye mixture. This is the one that is hand sewn. Some part is left plain to create the design effect that I want. This is the one you use a cup of drink. Over. Make sure every mixture, every part is submerged. And stir. Why this one I folded? I may not want to dye every part. I may choose to dye some part and allow some part to be plain. And I'll still get my desired result. So because the water is very hot, pour cold water into your hand now before you dip in your hand so that it won't be too hot. Now mix it, make sure every part. I'm allowed to sit there for 20, 10 to 20 minutes. This is the marbling technique. I'm going to show you two methods of creating your marble effect. And when you are creating your design, you may decide to use a color fabric, thereby achieving two colors at once, instead of repeating. But if I want another color, I'll bring this one out when it's dry. I retie again, areas I didn't tie before, and I dip into another color of dye. And when you are dyeing, start from a lighter color to a darker color. This is SS water. This is the one I folded. See the design, what it created. So now I'm going to take them out and rinse. This out SS.
cut in there. Quick cut again. This is the star bust the entire time. So when it does it dies, it will not show the actual color. This is the marbling we use uh, wool to tie. This is the marbling technique. Tie and dye technique of marble. This is the folding technique. The result of the folding technique. Where we fold it. This is the vertical line design. So this is the thread sewing, tacking with needle technique. So this is tacking with the thread. 